fewer shows, higher prices, more ads, the new reality of streaming is dawning on consumers. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. If this is your first time listening, then welcome. Here at Plain English, we trick you into improving your English. You think you're listening just to learn about the world, but what you're really doing is improving your vocabulary and your listening skills. We're sneaky that way. This is lesson number 579. So that means you can find the full lesson at plainenglish.com slash 579. I have to keep reminding myself every day is someone's first day listening. So I have to explain what the full lesson means. It means the transcript, links to English articles about the main topic, an extra word or expression that I didn't have time to mention in the episode, that's called learn the lingo. Then for plus members, we have translations of the hardest words and phrases in the lesson. We have a step-by-step -step video walkthrough lesson all about how to express a complicated idea. There's a full page of interactive exercises which help with grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, and listening. So when I say full and complete lesson, that's what I mean. Every single Monday and Thursday, we do all of that for you. And today, all that can be found at plainenglish.com slash 579. Today's topic, the party is over in streaming as the big media companies are discovering a new spending discipline. We'll talk about what that means for you and me, the consumers. In the second half of the lesson, I'll show you how to use the English expression all of a sudden, and we have a song of the week. Let's dive in. Paramount Plus spent $30 million to produce a single episode of Yellowstone. Netflix released 891 Netflix originals. Not episodes. We're talking about movies and original series. 891 in 2022. Disney opened its beloved library of films for the first time a few years ago. Oh, and all this comes without commercials. Not happy with the streaming service you're on? Just cancel and go to one you like better. You're in charge. There's no doubt that on-screen entertainment today is far better than it was in the age of linear television and blockbuster rentals. But this benefit has been subsidized by a fire hose of cash. The streaming industry has sprayed the film and TV industry with money. But all of a sudden, the flow of money is starting to dry up. And that's not good news for you and me, the consumers. Disney launched its streaming service, Disney Plus, in late 2019. It started in the U.S. 
at $6.99, a lot cheaper than Netflix. Its low price and its familiar hits, Star Wars, Marvel, all the animated movies, they helped Disney grow to a peak of 164 million subscribers after just three years. It's over 200 million subscribers now if you count their other platforms. It's a great top-line growth story. The problem is the growth isn't profitable. They make a lot of money, but they spend even more. Disney loses money every month on Disney Plus, and its investors are growing frustrated. Investors are asking, if Disney can't make a profit with 200 million subscribers, then when can it make a profit? Costs need to come down. They are just spending too much on content. Disney's new CEO has promised to slash spending across the company, but especially in its streaming service. It's the same story at Paramount, the service that makes Yellowstone. The streaming service Paramount Plus is losing $500 million per quarter. That's a rate of $2 billion a year. Losses in streaming are wiping out profits in the whole rest of the business. Thanks to streaming, the company's earnings fell 99% last year. That can't continue. How are they going to right the ship? Disney, Paramount, HBO Max, and others are following a consistent playbook consisting of four tactics. They're raising prices, they're introducing advertising, they're pulling back on new content, and they're removing older content from their libraries. Start with prices. Disney raised its US price from $6.99 to $11.99, a big increase. Paramount is going from $10 to $12 for its most popular tier. Netflix is not raising prices, but as you heard earlier this year, it's planning a crackdown on password sharing. And that crackdown is starting to happen now, at least in the US. So while the monthly bill doesn't increase, Netflix is hoping more people pay their own bills, which is like a price increase in disguise. The second idea is to introduce advertising. This does two things. First, it adds an additional source of revenue to the streamers from advertisers. But it also retains some customers who might not be able to pay the full bill. If you don't want to pay the full price, you can pay a lower price if you're willing to watch ads. This helps streamers retain some customers that they might otherwise have lost. Disney Plus and Netflix are employing this strategy. But for consumers, this 
is an uncomfortable reminder of what we hated about television of the past. Too many commercial interruptions. Third, streamers are pulling back on new content. Just a few years ago, streamers wouldn't think twice about green lighting expensive new shows. But now, the big streamers are all saying they'll spend less on content. HBO Max, for example, decided not to produce a highly anticipated series called Demimond, saying it was too expensive. The CEOs of Paramount and Disney have said they're going to spend less too. Paramount said it thinks 2023 will be the peak spending year in streaming. Netflix said it's being more careful about spending on new shows. The streaming giant is releasing only 49 titles in 2023, a decline of about 50% over last year. Still, that's 49 feature films over and above new series. The cuts are hitting the writers too. The creatives who write the jokes and the screenplays are on strike over the stinginess of the streaming giants. The fourth tactic is to remove shows from the library. New shows attract subscribers and keep subscribers from canceling. Subscribers like the shiny new object, the new show that catches their attention. But a lot of subscribers like the library, the big selection of old shows and movies. Streamers, though, have to pay rights and royalties for these old shows. And that's another area they're looking to trim. HBO Max and Disney Plus have both started dropping movies and shows from their libraries, reducing the overall selection. On Netflix, just a few years ago, only about a quarter of the content was produced by Netflix. Now, it's over 60%. That's from all the new Netflix content, but also from trimming its library of non-Netflix originals. Ouch, the party is definitely over. For us, the consumers, what happens? Our prices are going up. We might have to watch ads. We are getting a smaller selection of new shows. And if we're not happy with the new shows, we have fewer older shows and movies to watch. In a sign that things have possibly come full circle, Warner Brothers, which owns HBO, is launching a streaming ad-supported linear channel that you can watch on streaming devices like Roku's. So it's totally free, but you have to sit through ads and you have to watch what's currently on. You can't choose what to watch. It almost sounds like over-the-air television, right? Today's expression is an easy one to learn. All of a sudden. I bet you've heard it before. It simply means quickly, suddenly, without warning. Now, some people would tell you 
And I wouldn't disagree with them, but some people would tell you that you shouldn't say all of a sudden. You should just say the word suddenly. For example, I was walking down the street and all of a sudden it began to rain. That means it began to rain without warning, quickly. I was taken by surprise. You can absolutely say, I was walking down the street and suddenly it began to rain. And if you're writing, I would definitely agree that suddenly is better. But it's weird. People like to say all of a sudden. It means the same thing as suddenly, and it's not as concise, it's not as short, but some people just like saying all of a sudden better. I kind of like it better too. You've heard me use it before. In recent years, streaming services have been spending lavishly on new movies and series. Critics proclaimed a golden age of television. Apple and Amazon fired a bazooka of cash at the industry, and it seemed like this would go on forever. But all of a sudden, most streaming companies are cutting back on their spending. It's taking people by surprise. Only a year ago, it seemed like spending was unlimited. And now today, every media CEO is talking about cutting costs, reducing spending, raising prices, all that stuff. So it seemed to come without warning and it came quickly. So all of a sudden, almost every streamer is focused on costs. I'll disclose, this is funny, I'll disclose a personal detail about myself, and this is embarrassing. I'm not good with discussions of the human body. I remember science class years ago in school. They would teach us about the human body. Bone marrow, arteries, platelets, how your ears work, tendons. Oh, make it stop. I would sit there in class feeling fine, listening to the teacher, taking notes, and all of a sudden I would just feel sick. So the teacher would be there talking about the lungs, and all of a sudden, with no warning, I would start to feel nauseous. My eyes would blink uncontrollably. This is true. And I would have to leave the room. All the teachers knew it. If I just got up and walked out of the classroom, it was because all of a sudden I started to feel sick. Well, I had a dentist appointment once years ago, and I'm embarrassed to admit I had a few cavities. The dentist wanted to make an impression on me to explain to me how important it was to care for my teeth so that I didn't continue to get cavities in the future. And to illustrate this very important point, he took out a diagram about the roots of your teeth and started to explain to me, I don't even know what. All of a sudden, I was on the floor. I had fainted. So you can use all of a sudden to describe an unexplained change in a person's behavior or attitude. All of a sudden, JR is drinking matcha tea all the time. I had no idea. Then I see him with his matcha tea when we zoom together, and I had no clue he even liked it. 
but he found this matcha tea that he likes, and now he's drinking it a lot. It was a fairly quick and unexpected change in his behavior, so we say, all of a sudden, JR is drinking matcha tea in the afternoons. Speaking of JR, it's time for JR's English Song of the Week. Today it's by Jamie Hanna, and the song is called Flowers. It's based on a quote May the flowers remind us why the rain is necessary. The song has been described as haunting but uplifting. Jamie Hanna wrote it during the pandemic, and he said it's about the bravery and strength required to fall in love. Flowers by Jamie Hanna is the song of the week. Thank you very much, J.R. And that's all for today's Plain English. I want to acknowledge all the listeners who are currently in day four of the Plain English Chat GPT Challenge. Congratulations to all of you. Very nice job so far. We might have some more news to share on the GPT front in the next week or two. You never know. But for now, we'll wrap up Plain English Lesson number 579 for Thursday, June 8th, 2023. We'll see you back here on Monday.